Hello and welcome to another Tech Tech. This time we're talking about Kaika Budget Spirit Tribal. Um, right, this is a 100 euro um, budget deck and the command is Kaika, Wind's Fury. Um, it's a 4 mana 3 3 flying spirit wizard and whenever we cast a non creature spell we create a 1 1 flying. A spirit token and we can sacrifice the spirit to add one red mana to our mana pool Ooh. sorry right there <laughs> then we are playing one of those new card types uh, called battle it's a three mana battle and on ETB we create two one one blue kraken creature tokens with trample and when we flip it, we get a 3-3 legendary serpent and non-creature spells we cast have Convoke and at the beginning of our end step, we untap up to four creatures we control, right? No, we could also untap an opponent's creature. All right. Hell yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Then uh, we're playing 41 creatures and not not exactly all of them are spirits, but like I think they're like three non-spirit creatures. So yeah, pretty much all spirits. Um, the first one is Ao, the Dawn Sky. It's a five mana, five four flying vigilance dragon spirit. And when it dies, we can choose one. Uh, yeah, we can choose one. One mode is look at the top seven cards of your library and put any number of non-land permanent cards, cards with total mana value four or less from among them onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. <sighs> I'm so tired. Um, the second mode is put two plus one plus one counters on each permanent you control that's a creature or vehicle. Then we are playing Bygone Bishop, that's a 3 mana, 2-3 um, flying spirit cleric, and whenever we cast a creature spell with mana value 3 or less, we create a clue token. Um, I think about half of the creatures we are playing are less than 3, or 3 or less. We are, we are playing some big stuff, so yeah. Um, okay, next one. Cemetery Illuminator, 3 mana, 2 3 flying spirit. When it ETBs or attacks, we can exile a card from a graveyard and we can look at the top card of our library. And once each turn, we may cast a spell from the top of our library that shares a card type with a card exiled with Cemetery Illuminator. Um, then we are playing Clarion Spirit, 2 mana, 2 2 spirit. Whenever we cast our second spell each turn, we create a 1 1 white spirit creature token with flying. Then we're playing Draw Skull Captain, the 3 mana 2 2 flying spirit soldier, and other spirits we control get plus 1 plus 1 and have hex proof. Then Draw Skull Reaver, 7 mana 3 4 flying double strike lifelink spirit, and whenever we gain life, we draw a card. And um, we're playing Drog Skull Reinforcements, 4 mana, 2 2 Spirit Soldier with melee, and other spirits we control have melee, and prevent all non combat damage that would be dealt to spirits we control. Um, what I didn't say till now, what I may have should have said, said is that. <sighs> 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 Exactly. Um, I, I said it's a budget spirit deck list, and that's true. Mm. And we the the win cons or the strategy how we want to win is basically either combat damage or ping damage through something like here yeah, Lord Hold Apprentice um, or. Uh, wildfire awakener um and we we want to use um our commander to put some tokens into play and actually use them quite a lot as a second, second let i think 
Um, and we are also trying to make like a bunch of untip shenanigans uh, so our ping stuff can actually be effective. And yeah, it's otherwise it's just creature based spirit deck list with a convoke sub theme. Um, just because, like when I when I built this deck, I mostly wanted to build a deck about uh, around faces of the past. And faces of the past says whenever a creature we put, no, whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, we may tap or untap. Not actually we, not may, but we tap or untap all creatures that share a creature type with it. Meaning, when we sacrifice one spirit into our commander's activated ability or mana ability. Mm, we can untap all our spirits, um, which is good when we can use our spirits to, for example, put mana into our mana pool or cast spells through Convoke um, or give our, our spirits the, the tap ability to, de to deal one damage to each opponent. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to do. And I I wanted to do it for a long time, but I, I wasn't sure about any... I, I didn't have any specific commander in mind. And also, my decks always have to have um, like one big theme and one sub-theme. And like just just two, three months ago, the, the um, March of Machines set was released and with it the, the convoke precon and that is how this build uh, this deck is born basically so yeah uh i think now i pretty much mentioned the, the important stuff um uh, i'm gonna try to remember to point out some nice mechanics that we have mm, yeah Let's continue. So next creature is Drum Bellower, three mana, two one flying spirit, and we untap all our creatures during each other player's untap step. Then we're playing Ethereal Investigator, four mana, two three flying spirit. On the ETBs, we investigate for each opponent we have, and whenever we draw the second card, in uh, each turn we create a one one white spirit creature tongue with flying. Then we're playing Ethereal Valkyrie, 6 mana, 4-4 four, four flying Spirit Angel, when it ETBs or attacks, we draw a card and then exile a card from our hand. It becomes foretold and its foretell cost is equal to its mana cost reduced by 2. And then we're playing Flock Chaser Phantom, 6 mana, 5-5 five, five flying Vigilant Spirit, and when it attacks, the next spell we cast this turn has Convoke. Then we're playing Ghostly Pilferer, 2 mana, 2 1 Spirit Rogue. When it becomes untapped, we may pay 2 generic mana. If you do, we draw a card. Whenever an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, we draw a card. And by discarding a card, we can make it unblockable this turn. Then we're playing Guardian of Faith, 3 mana, 3 2 Flash Vigilance Spirit Knight. When it ETBs, we can uh, have any number of target creatures we control phase out. Yeah, we control. Uh, then we're playing <laughs> Offree Ghost Forge, 5 mana, 4, 5, Dwarf Cleric, mm, one of the very few non-spirit creatures we're playing. Uh, it says spirits we control get plus 1, plus 1, and have Trample and Haste. And whenever... <sighs> whenever <laughs> another non-token creature you control dies, exile it. If you do create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a spirit in addition to its other types, and it has, when this creature leaves the battlefield under your control, what am I saying? When this creature leaves the battlefield, return the exile card to your graveyard. Then we're playing Kami of False Soap, basically the, the spore frog in white. Then we're playing Karmic Guide, you should know that card. And we're playing Kataki War Sage. Uh, that's a card that I may cut 
Um, oh yeah, I haven't mentioned it. I don't have the deck in paper yet. I am currently building it. Um, so I haven't, haven't actually played this deck. Um, that's why there are like three, two, three cards that I may, may end up cutting. <sighs> so yeah, Kataki War Sage is a two mana, two one spirit. And it says all artifacts on the battlefield have at the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice this artifact unless you pay one generic mana. And I mean, we're not playing a huge amount of artifacts, but it's five non-token artifacts and we are creating some clue tokens. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, next card, Lelia, the Blade Reforged, 3 mana, 2 to haste, Spirit Warrior. When it attacks, we exit the top card of our library and we may play it this turn. And whenever one or more cards are put into exile from our library and or graveyard, put a plus one plus one counter on Lelia. Uh, I, I like this card a lot and I'm playing it, I think, in not, not every deck um, that's playing red because every card in my deck has to have uh, some synergy or some extra reason. I'm not playing cards because they're just good. Um, I am either playing them because they they are a payoff from what my deck is supposed to do, or they just really fit the theme or the tribe, or they enable stuff like that. So yeah, for example, I have I have a Excel deck like deck that's casting from exile and then i have a haste matter stack and i have a plus one plus one counter deck uh, that's playing red and she is in all of that but i wouldn't play her in is it spell slinger yeah uh, then next card law hold apprentice two mana two two human cleric with magecraft and it says whenever we cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell this turn Spirits we control gain tap d1 damage to each opponent, and this is the card that I uh, hopefully wins us uh, some games. I like that it's really cheap. So like later in the game when we have like 20 spirits, um, we could just play it and should not have any problems uh, casting an instant sorcery. Except for we are out of instant sorceries because we are playing six sorceries and eight instants. That's not too much. But I already uh, know that if I end up cutting this and this, then um, I'm going to add the Chaos Warp and Arcane Denial to the instance. So we'll see. Um, yeah, next card Mausoleum Wanderer 1 Blue. Uh, flying Spirit 1-1, one, one, when another spirit enters the battlefield under our control, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn, and we can sacrifice it to counter target instant sorcery spell with, uh, unless its controller pays X, where X is its power. Then we're playing Millicent, Restless Revenant, seven mana, four, four flying spirit soldier, that costs one less to cast, one generic less to cast for each spirit we control. And whenever another non-token spirit we control deals combat damage or dies, we create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. Uh, very nice. Then we're playing Mirror Hall Mimic. On the front, it's basically just a clone effect that says that the copy is also a spirit. And it does copy a creature on the battlefield. We don't have to control it. Any creature on the battlefield. And the backside is an aura that we can cast from our graveyard with its disturb cost. And the aura says enchant a creature and at the beginning of our end upkeep we create a token that's a copy of that creature except the copy so the token is a spirit. And if this aura would be put into our graveyard we exile, and exile it instead. Then we're playing Myrjin of Blooming Dawn. Um, <laughs> For 8 mana we get a 4 6 spirit and when it ETBs, if we've cast it from our hand, it enters with an indestructible counter on it and we can remove an indestructible counter from it to create a 1-1 colorless spirit token for each permanent we control. 
which is very nice. Like, it doesn't say non-land permanent, so most of the time we will easily get, like, 10 spirits, right? Except for when we remove the counter just after a board wipe. So, yeah. Um, then we're playing Nebelgast, Herald. Like, I'm so confused with those names, because I'm German, and this this name is so German, and I'm trying to record those videos in English, so I don't know. Um, anyway, 3 mana, 2-1 flying flash spirit, on when it or another spirit ETBs, we can tap target creature and opponent controls, which I think is very good. Um, this is a budget deck that is only playing in combat matter decks and the one problem um, this deck could have is like big, like huge trample creatures and just tapping them down in the beginning of combat is very good. Um, then we're playing Oyobi who split the heavens. It's a 7 mana flying spirit, 3 6, and when we cast a spirit or a cane spell, we create a 3 3 white spirit creature token with flying. Uh, we are exactly playing one arcane spell, but we are playing 40 other spirit spells, so yeah. No, actually, that's not true. Just 38, something like that. Um, then we're playing Priest of the Blast Graph. 3 mana, 1, 2, Human Cleric, should be the last non-spirit creature we are playing, and no, it's not. Um, <laughs> and at the beginning of our end step, we create X 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying, where X is the number of opponents we control that have more lands than we do. And guess what? That's the only reason we are playing uh, 1 two, three bounce lands in this deck, um, just because, yeah, bounce lands, and, uh, like, when we're playing bounce lands, we end up, we end up having less lands than our opponents should have, um, you know, that sometimes it's this one mana screwed opponent, but hey, um, if this creates only one token, I would say it's not necessarily worth it, but two is already worth it. So like, there is this one three mana sorcery that creates two spirits. So having like the text of the sorcery basically on a body is like much better. So yeah. Uh, then we are playing rattle chains, two mana, two one flesh flying spirit. When it ETBs, another target spirit gains hexproof until end of turn, and we can cast spirit spells as though as they had flash. Then we're also playing Return Past Caller, 6 mana for 2 Flying Spirit Cleric, and on ETB we uh, return a spirit, instant or sorcery card from our graveyard to our hand. Um, just a very, very bad and overpriced uh, Eternal Witness, but it's a spirit, and we are on a budget. Um, then we're playing Ryusai, the Fallen Star, 6 mana, 5-5 five, five, Flying Dragon Spirit, and when it dies, we deal 5 damage to each creature without flying. Um, the thing I always disliked about this and, for example, Owl, is that you, you, you never exactly know when you're going to have the trigger, except for when you have a, a second outlet. So, I really like that our commander is a second outlet for spirits. Um, very good. Mm, then we're playing Saint Traft and Ram Carolus, 3 mana, 3 4 spirit human, and when it becomes tapped, if it's the first time we this ability resolves, we create a 1 1 human, uh, human token, and the second time we create a 1 1 blue spirit token, which is blue, uh, not white, but hey, eh? and if it's the third time, we create a 4 4 white angel. I guess they wanted to include all of the card's color in the token, so the human is red, the spirit is blue, and the angel is white, because a blue spirit is less weird than a blue angel would be. But hey, 
and whenever we cast oops, whenever we cast a spell that has convoke, we untap it. Um, so yeah. By the way, uh, no, no, we're gonna talk about that later. Um, selfless spirit. 2 mana, 2-1 two, spirit cleric with flying, and sacrifice it to g give our creatures indestructible until end of turn. Then we're playing Skyclave Apparition, 3 mana, 2-2 two, two, core spirit. On ETB we exile non-land, non-token, permanent, and opponent controls with mana value 4 or less. And when it leaves the battlefield, uh, the exiled card's owner creates a XX illusion token, where X is the converted mana cost of the exiled card. And yeah, this does say non-token, non-land. Um, I have I have seen so many people trying to excel token on my watch, but hey. Um, then spectral arcanist four mana, three two flying spirit wizard, and on ETB we can cast an instant or sorcery spell from our from a graveyard. Uh, for free, um, for as long as its mana value is equal or less to the number of spirits you control, and if if it would be put into a graveyard, exit instead. The next card is Strict Protector. Wait, did I read Spectral Arcanist? But I did read this card. Um, next card is Strict Protector. Two mana, all not all three. One three Flying Spirit Cleric, and when a permanent entering the battlefield triggers a cause, a uh, causes a triggered ability to trigger. Counter that ability unless it's controller pays two. Uh, generally, I I like this effect, um, and I, like it it already was in the list when the list wasn't when when I just started writing the the deck list. Um, but now that I've finished the deck list, I realize that I actually have quite a lot of of ETB effects. It's not it's not a huge amount, but it's enough for me to say, hmm. So this is not an ETB. Uh, so this is also not an ETB. But for example, we're just counting real quick, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, 8, I guess, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 12 out of 40. We'll see. I'll, I'll uh, playtest this deck as soon as I have it. And after a bit of uh, playing it, I'll decide. Oh! oh. Next card, Supreme Phantom, 2 mana, 1, 3 flying, other spirits you control get plus 1, plus 1. Uh, just a small Lord effect, then Anthem effect. Then we're playing Tomorrow, Azami's Familiar, 6 mana, 1, 5 spirit. If we would draw a card, we look at the top 3 cards of our library instead, put one of these cards into our hand and the rest in the bottom of our library in any order. Um, I don't know who came up with this. Like, imagine you're a, a card designer at Wizard of the Coast, and like a colleague is like, "Yeah, you have to design legendary spirits for the next Kamigawa block, a uh, Kamigawa set." And you're like, "Hmm, we should definitely have some more expensive spirits too." They should still be shit. Okay. Um, I'm so funny. Okay. <laughs> then um, this... I don't know. It's like good if our library is empty. And obviously, like, let us look at uh, three times as much cards for each draw we have. But I feel like we're not going to draw too much with this list. But hey. Uh, next card is Twilight Drover, 3 mana, 1-1 one, one spirit, and when a creature token leaves the battlefield, we put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, and for 3 mana, remove a counter, we create 2 spirit tokens. I like this card a lot, that's also a card like Lelia to me, for like a bit, like as, as soon as I'm playing 
tokens and or counters or spirits uh, I'm playing this card um, because it doesn't only see the creature tokens we control but also when a creature token an opponent controls leaves the battlefield it gets a counter and also basically just fuels itself after a quick like after like in the beginning it needs a bit of help but then creates the tokens that can block and or attack and yeah i like it a lot then we are playing venerable war singer oh actually and i have it in an activated ability deck like where sirda is my commander so i can just one mana remove a counter make two tokens which is very nice so yeah then a venerable war singer three mana three three vigilance trample spirit cleric when it deals combat damage to a player, we may return a creature card with mana value X or less from our graveyard to the battlefield where X is the amount of damage dealt. Uh, so yeah, I uh, I think uh, 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 uh. Um, I think we should be able to get through somewhere um, consistently to like return one uh, return some two or three drops to the battlefield again and the nice thing is if if we see that our opponent didn't declare a blocker uh, but we don't have like a real good target in our graveyard but on the battlefield we could still sacrifice it into our commander like for example with 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 this it's like okay attack blocker declare opponent somehow or maybe doesn't have a blocker or doesn't want to declare blocker and if that's the case we can just sacrifice it then go to damage step damage trigger bring it back exile something uh, like another thing oh nice uh hell yeah then um uh, where was i here next card wildfire awakener three mana and x uh it has convoke though and then we get a human wizard 3 2 and when it ETBs we create x 1 1 elemental creature tokens with whenever this creature becomes dead deal, deals 1 damage to target player uh, I need to cut this card right do I have... I just thought since the tokens are not spirits I can't untap them with faces of the past but I could still untap them with Jeskai ascendancy for example and they're still like good for like using them for convoke i don't know i'll see maybe i'll cut this too mm. yeah next card windburn muse it's just ghostly prison on a stick and the last card is you'll say the morning star six mana five five flying when it dies target player skips his on her next untap step and tap up to five target permanents that play controls um, this is one of the saltier cards in this deck list. Um, I, I never played this, but I wanted to, to try just because I witnessed some games where it was like if my opponent didn't untap, he couldn't uh, finish the job. So I thought maybe it's, it's worth a try. Then, next card Haunting Imitation. Oh, and also. What I wanted to say is, with it on the battlefield and my commander, I could have my opponent untap, and in in his upkeep, I'll just sacrifice this, target him, and then tap his five best creatures, and have them tapped for like basically two turns, right? Because they're tapped now in that turn, and they're not gonna untap next turn. So yeah, pretty sweet. Then, Haunting Imitation, Sorcery, for, for 3 mana, each player reveals the top card of his or her library, and for each creature card you create a 1-1 spirit that's a copy of that creature, and if... Sorry. Uh, and if no creature uh, was revealed this way, return it to its owner's hand. Um, like, return the Haunting Imitation to your hand. Uh, <laughs> and then we're playing March of Souls, 5 mana bought by uh just destroy all creatures they can't be regenerated and for each creature destroyed this way its controller puts a one one 
white spirit creature token into the play. I just thought that would be quite good because our spirits most likely will be the strongest spirits because we can do things with it and we can buff it and yeah. Um, then we're playing Ribbons of Rikai, 5 mana, Sorcery Arcane, draw a card for each spirit you control. Now, I know that there's like this Song of Melodies or something like that that's reading 4 mana, Sorcery, draw a card, uh, choose a creature type and draw a card for each creature you control of the chosen type, which is basically better than this one. But this has some synergy, so I'm playing it over the, the Melody Sorcery. Then we're playing Rousing of Souls, 3 mana, Sorcery with Palais. This, by the way, is also kind of Palais-like, but yeah. Um, each player reveals the top card of his or her library, and for each non land card revealed this way, you create a, we create a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying, and then each player draws the revealed card. Then there's Storm of Souls. Six mana sorcery, return all creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Each of them is a 1-1 spirit flying with flying in addition to its other types. Exile Storm of Souls. Um, I think this is great, especially when we have like anthem effects in our graveyard that we can also bring back with it. Um, so for example, when we bring back this... Wait. Yeah. When we bring back Supreme Phantom, Hoffrey, Ghost Forge, and Drogskull Reinforcements, um, it's like, a Spirits is like plus five, plus five. And by the way, um, this turns every creature into a Spirit, so Hoffrey now pumps itself uh, because it's a Spirit, and it gets melee because now it's a Spirit when we return it to Storm of Souls, so yeah, pretty nice. And then we might also have Drog Skull. Yeah, there are ways to, to make the spirits bigger than they seem. Uh, then we're also playing Ether Shockwave, 4 mana instant, choose one, uh, tap all spirits or tap all non spirit creatures. So, yeah, also very good. And I have to uh, check a message real quick. Man, I'm so professional. Unbelievable. Uh, okay. Then next card is <laughs> Benevolent, offering 4 mana instant. Choose an opponent, you and that a player each create 3 1 1 white spirit creature tokens with flying. Then choose a, an opponent. It can be a, a different opponent, by the way. And it should be most of the time. So um, choose an opponent, you you and the player each gain 2 life for each creature you control. Um, Which is quite nice. Like. For example, uh, there just was a board wipe, but this one opponent still has a like huge board, a uh, board that has like indestructible, and so you can cast this in response to the board wipe. I don't know. Would you do it in response to get more life, or afterwards to get three blockers, depending on what attackers the opponent has, right? Eh, no, right. We let's continue here. Clever Concealment, 4 mana instant with Convoke, and it says any number of non-land permanents we control face out. Very good. Then we are playing Cut Short, 3 mana with Convoke, destroy target planeswalker that was activated this turn, or type creature. By the way, we... Ah, no, we don't have a lot, right? We have like this, and the Ether Shockwave, and the face of the past that can like tap an opponent, an opponent's creature. I haven't talked about this too. So yeah, I just thought of like, we can just tap down the creature we want to destroy. We might be able to, but yeah. Um, right, then next card is Temporal Cleansing, 4 mana sorcery with Convoke, and we put the, we put target non-land cards uh, into its owner's library second from the top. I like the removal. It's very sad that it's not instant speed. If it were instant speed, it would be really good. Um, and in sorcery speed, it's just it's okay. I mean, it hits non-land permanent, so yeah. The next card is Geistlight Snare, three mana. Um, counter target spell unless its controller pays three. And this spell costs one less to cast if we control a spirit, and one less to cast if we control an enchantment. 
uh, by the way i uh, i said that when i'm when i end up cutting one two cards i'm gonna add um the the arcane denial and chaos swap and one might say that it contradicts it's like the opposite of what i said before that every card should have some kind of synergy um this statement is less important when it comes to what removal and counter spells i'm playing and when it comes to removal and counter spells the the spells should be should also be kind of efficient so yeah uh, next card is occult epiphany one blue and x instant we draw x, ca x cards then we discard x cards and we create a one one spirit creature token for each card type among cards discarded this way and then we are playing release to memory four mana instant extra target opponent's graveyard and for each creature card extra this way we create a one one color spirit token and last instant is worthy cause one white with buyback for two it says sacrifice a creature gain life equal to that sacrificed creature's toughness uh so that's like i added this card um as like it actually is, uh, is supposed to help life gain in this deck um but it also is there to just kind of make sure we always have an instant source, uh, instant in our hand um just because we have some cards that um where we definitely need an instant or sorcery and since we're not playing too many i thought i might just include one that might stick in my hand and also the sacrifice a creature which again uh triggers faces of the past and yes it is part of a combo that's possible in this deck but it's not an efficient combo it's like five card combo or something like that maybe even more so yeah um next card arcane signet i'm not gonna read that then here Ob obelisk of Urt, six mana artifact with convoke and when it etbs we choose a creature type but not when but as it etbs which is a creature type and creatures creatures of the chosen type get plus two plus two and we're playing soul ring you should know soul ring we're playing staff of the storyteller i think it's the most expensive card in this deck uh when it ATVs, we create a one one white spirit creature with flying and whenever we create one or more tokens we put a story counter on it and for one man for one white and tap and remove a story counter we draw a card and then we are also playing Wand of the World Soul, 3 mana, uh, enters the battlefield tapped, and it can either tap for 1 white, or can tap to give our next spell convoke. And then we are playing Clash of Realities, 4 mana enchantment. When Clash of Realities, no, not when, uh, all spirits have, like my spirits and my opponent's spirits have, when this creature comes into play, you may have a deal 3 mana to target non-spirit creature. And all non-spirit creatures have, when this creature enters the battlefield, you may have a deal 3 damage to target spirit. The good thing is, our opponents most likely will play non-spirits, so they can deal damage to spirits. You might think that's bad, and I mean, it's not ideal but guess what our commander is not a spirit so as long as our commander is just doesn't die that easily uh, we can keep making tokens to shoot our opponent's creatures and also we can just cast spirits right and yeah i thought that was a nice include i i mean obviously i um i have to play it to actually see if it's that good or if or not because you might think oh but like the problem with cards like this is when the opponents 
actually, like, for example, gang up on you, then they might have three times as many triggers of that than I do. And yeah, that's not that good, but if we can make it a politi political card, for example, I say, hey, dude, I'm going to play some spirits, but I promise not to shoot any creature of yours. So I want you to not shoot any creatures of mine. And suddenly the situations for the other two opponents is, okay, well, I could now play a creature to shoot one spirit, but that creature is not going to stick. So is it actually worth it to play that creature? So yeah, I think uh, that card is definitely worth a try. And yeah. Then next, uh, Face of the Past, I already read that card, and more people should play it. Because, for example, what can happen is, my opponent is, like, beginning his turn, untapping 476 elf creatures, and then wants to move, playing playing Crater Hoof Behemoth, and wants to move to combat, and I'm, like, shooting one elf, and then tapping down every other elf, so... They are pretty awesome. Um, next card, Jeskai Ascendancy. 3 mana, uh, enchantment. Whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we untap all our creatures, and they get plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. And whenever we cast a non-creature spell, uh, we may draw a card, and then if we do, we discard a card. And yes, I pronounced it if though they were two different things. But hey, then Sorceress class, 2 mana. On ETB we draw two cards and then this card two cards. Uh, for two mana we can level up to level two and then creatures we control have the ability to tap for one red air or blue, but we can only spend this to cast instance and sorcery spells. I'm gonna see if, if this card is good. Uh, and for five mana we basically get a reverse in the flux. Uh, so it says whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn. It I like that spells that spell deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of instant sorceries we cast. Uh, this this is actually something that can get crazy with worth a uh, worthy cause, since we might be able to cast with the cause like a billion times. No, I don't know, uh, but uh, yeah. Um, the last non land card is. Restoration of Eganjo. On ETB, we can search our library for basic planes and put it into our hand. Level uh, Chapter 2 is uh, we may discard a card. If we do, we can put a permanent card from our graveyard with mana value 2 or less onto, uh, into, onto the battlefield tapped. The last chapter is that it flips. And here it's a 3 4 Vigilance Fox Monk. And when it checks our blocks, we create a 1 1 colorless spirit tone. And then to the land base, that's, again, we're playing a bunch of decks, so the land base is rather cheap. Um, yeah, we're playing the, the pain lands. Like, the, the white, blue, didn't get a reprint in, in Dominaria, Dominaria United, but uh, red, blue, and red, white did, so they're pretty cheap. You can see 55 cents and 1 euro and 49. This is a bit more expensive, but hey. Um, then also, these lands got reprinted in the Dominaria Remastered. Right, yeah. Domina Dominaria Remastered. And this one didn't. But it's still not that expensive. And also, I think I've seen them, them those getting reprinted in Lord of the Rings pre-cons. I'm not exactly sure which one, but yeah. Um, so I'm kind of expecting them to fall even more in price. And then we're also playing those check lands, I think. Uh, actually, we're only playing one, right? Because we only can play one. Right. Um, then here, this, this land is one of those Kamigawa channel lands that creates two 1-1 one, one spirits when we channel it. And then we're playing the, the budget trium. Yeah, you can see for yourself, I think. So yeah. Um so right, that's the deck list. Um again, I, I want to win with combat damage most of the times or uh ping. Um 
And yeah, I have like a sub life game. No, yeah, I have a very small life game theme, I guess. No, you, you can't even actually call it a theme. What the hell is this? It's it's that antivirus, right? Is it? I don't know. Okay. Um, so yeah, and what I think what this deck is trying to do is just build up and protect your board against your opponent's stuff for, for long enough to swing for the win. And yeah, I, th I think it's going to be just fine, right? Like, I get that we are playing pretty, like, we're not actually playing a lot of mana rocks or any additional mana, uh, like, in addition to our land drops. So, like, those six drops and seven drops, they are far away from, from where we start. But, yeah, I think... I think when it goes alright, then we might actually be able to sacrifice a good amount of spirits into our commander to help cast uh, more spirits. So yeah, for example, I'm I'm super pumped to play this, and I like I I have so high hopes to to have to like get three tokens every end step, um, which would be like basically saying the first spell we cast in our turn costs three less to cast, which is very good. And yeah. Uh also we can we can bring back stuff that's dying um to to some degree. And I did say that I think we're not gonna draw too many cards with this deck. Actually, like we are we are making clues. We are drawing cards here, and here, and here, and this is just card advantage. And we are looking at more cards here. <laughs> uh, we can copy this card draw maybe, and this is going to give us one card. No, it's not. Um, is it? No. This is gonna give us one card. And this is card draw. And this is kind of card draw. We'll see. Um so yeah. Uh, one of the things like one of the most important cards in this deck, um, in my opinion, is here the 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 battle or the, the backside. That gives all our non creature spells convoke. Um, and then also maybe the, the those two untapped uh, things are very important. And yeah. I guess I guess that that's it. Oh what I wanted to mention also with um this this is getting even better when we have this one on the battlefield because it says prevent all non-combat damage that will be dealt to spirits you control so yeah that's pretty awesome and yeah um i think i'm gonna end this video right here um uh, i'm gonna write some things in the video description like some Mm, card combinations I would like to see when I play this deck. Um, so yeah, I hope you have a nice day, and I wish you a nice day, and I'm fine.